Hi guys. It is a chilly winter night here in the first week of October. Here in the end times and Bugs in a Jar Farm. It is a Monday night, October 3rd, 2020. So, uh, 2020. 2022. I just have 20 something on my mind. So, anyway, guys, I just sure they're not listening to this. So I have this very nice young 20-something <laughs> couple. I think they're 24 years old, this couple camping here uh, at the hip camp. They're going to be here all week. They're here from uh, <laughs> they're here from the big city. That big city a few hours east of here. Uh so, really nice, really nice kids, and uh, you know, these uh, city kids coming out to the country, and they have completely fallen in love with Bugs in a Jar Farm, and, you know, I'm out there shooting the shit with them, and, and uh, so, you know, just as carefully as I could, you know, just trying to feel them out about what their plans for the future were. And this nice young man, he, uh, he said, well, I want to be like you, is what, <laughs> That's what this kid told me. He wanted to be like me, that he wanted to move to the country, get him a little cabin out in the country and uh, start a garden and all of this stuff. Um, so I invited him. I, I said, well, put your money where your mouth is. I, I said, uh, you know, come out here and work next summer. Uh, <laughs> And see if this is the life that you want or not. And he, so he acts like he's really considering coming out here and working at Bugs in a Jar Farm. I, his girlfriend was being kind of quiet uh, over in the, she was sitting at the picnic table knitting. I did not know any uh, Doomer chick in her 20s knew how to knit. And so anyway, somehow it came up that I, I mentioned that I was on Social Security. I guess he did not realize what an old fart I was, and he seemed kind of surprised to hear that I was old enough to get Social Security. I would say, so, you know, he's 24. And he went off into this fucking rant about Social Security. I really wish uh, I, I had the camera running. I mean, I like this kid. You know, he's 24. He works at fucking Harbor Freight. He and his girlfriend both work, work at fucking Harbor Freight Tools. And the other thing he does to earn extra money is he is a professional line sitter. I didn't know what a line sitter was. Have you ever heard this term? And, and what he does, he charges $20 an hour in New York City to wait in line for like, you know, at the fucking DMV or the Social Security or whatever. Uh, he actually uh, charges $20 an hour to wait in line. That I guess had, he just goes to these places that have these long lines. And I, I don't know if he carries a sign, I will wait in line for you. <laughs> anyway, he says he picks up, uh, you know, quite a bit. I, you know, it's kind of the flip side as I was telling him that, uh, like when I was living down there in Peru and Ecuador, and I had to go to some fucking DMV bullshit. Well, not DMV, I didn't have a car, but whatever, you know, immigration or whatever that I was in some shit with down there and you know but going there in this fucking line would be four hours long and I would just walk up to the head of the line and I would pull out a ten dollar bill you know to get the <laughs> for the first guy in line 
to give me uh, to sell me his place in line for ten dollars so he would get my number you know I would be like number 462 and uh, this this poor schmuck who had been sitting there for five fucking hours waiting to get to the head of the light I'd pull out a damn ten dollar bill and uh, <laughs> These, and all these people, you know, trying to sell me their place in line. But anyway, I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting off. Uh, so uh, anyway, this is what the, this young man does uh, between uh, <laughs> Harbor Freight Tools and being a professional line sitter. That he decides he's thinking that he wants to move to the country. So he says he's really going to consider coming to work at Bugs in a Jar Farm. I think I need to have him speak with Brother Alistair before he signs up for that detail. But who knows? Uh, but anyway, when Social Security got mentioned, I, I mean, this kid went into a full-blown fucking rant about... A, 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 he goes, he goes, I'm 24 years old. There's no fucking way, you know, I am ever going to see a penny in 40 fucking years. You know, and then he went in, and, and I'm just sitting there. You know, you need to be real careful about talking about politics. And he just launched into this fucking, fucking doomer tirade that, uh, you know, I think this shit is coming down. Uh, he goes, 40 years. Yeah, right. He goes, this shit is coming down. And it's coming down hard. And his, and his girlfriend's over there uh, keeping her mouth shut. And, 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 and I can see her getting, you know, concentrating on her damn knitting while her 24-year-old uh, doomer boyfriend is, is going off on this fucking tirade about how this whole fucking shit show is getting ready to crash in on his ass. And, I, you know, he's basically kind of looking at me to see what I, to, to see what my comment uh, uh, is to this 24-year-old, uh, you know, telling me he understands completely how fucked he is. And, and not just social, I mean, social security is the least of it. He, he knows how fucked he is. How fucked he is, how fucked his girlfriend is, and uh, he, he just wants to spend a little bit of time out in the country before this whole shit show comes out. So he's kind of looking at me like I'm supposed to, that I'm supposed to join in this fucking conversation. And and, and I said, dude, uh, I, I I said I need to be real careful about. <laughs> you know, getting in conversations with my uh, paying guests like this. I, I, I said, all I can, I said, all I'm going to say is that I am so happy that you are the one who's 24 and I'm the one who's 63. I said, if I were your age, I would be curled up in a fetal position on the floor of my closet in the dark, screaming, Mommy! <laughs> And uh, he thought that sounded about right. And uh, I, I, I said, man, I, I said, I am, uh, I, I, I said, I, I, I don't know what to tell you, brother. I said, but if you want to come to Bugs in a Jar Farm and, and uh, get a little bit of taste of uh, an alternative way of living, I told him uh, I'm creating an unintentional community here. And uh, I said, I guarantee you, you would learn something. And uh, he seemed really interested in it. Of course, his girlfriend, uh, she, never, <laughs> she never said a word. But anyway, speaking of 20-somethings, I want to uh, send out a nod to some young man I have never heard from, Nick Kicks. Nick Kicks who was commenting, I won't read his whole comment, he was uh, commenting on my obviously uh, tongue-in-cheek video yesterday. A clueless Walmart shopper questions why 20 million sub-Saharan Africans are starving to death. 
uh, you know, when I was sitting there eating those 20 cent, uh, 20 cent tangerines and sitting in Ithaca, New York, paying 20 cents at Walmart for a fucking tangerine that came from sub-Saharan Africa. So anyway, he had uh, Nick Kicks left this long comment, and I do have to, I've heard this name before, David Foster Wallace, but this is, uh, you know, so Nick understood, obviously, that I was being ironic. Uh, he, uh, I don't know how long Nick has been uh, listening to me. Anyway, the second half of his comment, tongue-in-cheek shit aside, have you ever looked into David Foster Wallace? David, I need to look him up. His takes on a post-irony world seem more relevant by the day when we accept the fuck of a joke, the fuck of a joke that is society and acquiesce to its absurdity with dark humor to veil the hopelessness. There is really not a chance of change. Twenty-something here and they should have never been born aspect of your vid description really kicks tonight. Maybe that is why he, assuming David Foster Wallace, hanged himself. So uh, anyway, so my, my response to this young man uh, from my my wisdom of being a 63-year-old doomer, if you are in your 20s and have figured out, quote, when we accept the fuck of a joke that is society and acquiesce to its absurdity with dark humor to veil the hopelessness, you are light years of most clueless morons three times your age. Of course, this knowledge will not aid and abet you in life, and you will no doubt get laid less than those who will never figure it out. Yep. Guys, all you can do is laugh when you're eating a 20 cent fucking tangerine from Walmart in Ithaca, New York, while 20 million people, mostly children, who should never have been born are starving to death uh, right down the street from where that tangerine was grown. Uh, anyway, the post-irony, post-irony, anyway, it must be hell to be 20-something and to be a 20-something doomer like this uh, nice young man out here and just, uh, I mean, I mean, what the fuck? What the fuck would I sound like right now if I were 23 instead of 63? Yep. Dark humor. Dude, what did he say? Anyway, dark humor to hide the veil of loneliness, the veil of hopelessness or whatever. One more time. Acquiesce to its absurdity with dark humor to veil the hopelessness. Oh, fuck. <laughs> It really is getting harder to laugh about this, guys.
you know, there is a thin line before an absurdist worldview in suicide. Uh, get out there and enjoy your absurdist worldview. Well, you still can. Bye, guys. Ugh.